One of the biggest contraindications or major concerns that we see when it comes to nitroglycerin is its avoidance in inferior MIs. Now we need to look at that science to make sure that the science actually backs up what our concerns are with inferior MIs. And that's what we're going to talk about with this GEMS article. Let's dig into it. One of the biggest things that we teach in EMT and paramedic school when using nitroglycerin is to, in its avoidance in inferior MIs, especially if they're involving the right ventricle itself. And so what we're going to look at today is if the science and the concerns that we have actually match up, meaning that we want to make sure that we want to see if nitroglycerin truly has a big concern with inferior infarcts and if it's dangerous or if it's safe in order to give this particular medication in this situation. So I think it's important to focus on why we were concerned in the first place. What the theory is as to why we don't give nitroglycerin or we use it in caution when it comes to an inferior MI. And the truth of it and why we're concerned is because we know that nitro is a vasodilator. Nitro is actually going to convert into nitric oxide into the body and nitric oxide is going to have a direct effect on both the, the venous side and the arterial side causing vasodilation on both sides of that fence, the venous and the arterial side. Now when we decrease systemic vascular resistance, we, we cause vasodilation, we cause a decrease in blood return back to that right ventricle. Because if we cause a decrease in blood return to that right ventricle because of vasodilation, we ultimately are going to decrease the preload. Okay, we're going to decrease the preload. Okay, and that preload is the amount of fluid that's in that ventricle prior to contraction, the amount of fluid that's ready to be pushed forward either to, in this particular case, towards the lungs to get oxygenated, because this is obviously deoxygenated blood. And why is that a concern in, in inferior MIs? Well, we know that inferior MIs are going to often affect the right coronary artery, and they're going to, again, if they're affecting the right coronary artery, they're all ultimately going to be affecting the right ventricle itself. Okay, And so the theory here is that we don't want to decrease preload because we already have a damaged right ventricle that can't squeeze nearly as hard, meaning that we have the inability to push blood towards the lungs, which we need to get oxygenated to bring it back to the left ventricle and continue to squeeze. And so our theory or our concern is if we decrease preload even more by causing vasodilation, we're ultimately decreasing the amount of fluid overall that can be pushed by that right ventricle. But ultimately, we don't truly know. This is just a theory that we've been teaching for years and years and years. So now we're going to look at the study that was done to see if our concerns were actually something that we need to be truly concerned about. So the article that we're looking at, or the study that we're looking at, is looking at EMS in particular. And what they did is they took a retrospective look at about 1,500 MI PCRs, or patient care reports. So that's 1,500 different patients that they're looking into the past. Now, they're not looking at this in future perspectives, meaning that they're not actually studying this on an ongoing basis from this particular article. They went back in time in the past and found 15 MI patients that they took for this study in order to determine the result. That's an important piece to understand, to know that how this actual article was created and how the evidence was built. So that's the first part. So 1,500 patients were looked at in this particular thing. And the next thing that they looked for is that they looked for anything, uh, a 12 lead ECG, and those 12 lead ECGs registering an MI or an acute MI, regardless if it was an inferior MI or if it was a lateral or a looking at a anterior MI, it didn't matter. They just wanted to look at all MIs and see if they all had hypotension. Okay, 
That's what they were looking for. And they described hypotension of a systolic blood pressure below 90. So 1,500 patients all registering an MI on their 12 ECGs. And what this study was looking for is any hypotension in those particular patients uh, in, in order to kind of create their evidence and create their kind of their log of what we should be looking for here. So that's the first part that they did is they looked in the past at these particular markers in order to create their evidence. So here's the crazy part is that they actually looked at these and they looked at to see how often hypotension occurred in both inferior MIs and non-inferior STEMIs. And what they found is there was hypotension evidence in both inferior MIs and non-inferior MIs at about the same percentage. About 8% of all MIs actually have hypotension. It didn't matter if there was inferior or non-inferior MI, they both had about eight to nine percent chance of having hypotension. Then they looked at the nitroglycerin side of things. They looked at inferior MIs and non-inferior MIs to see if nitroglycerin had effect on one side or the other. And what they found again is that nitroglycerin dropped a blood pressure by 30 points about 20 to 23 percent of the time in both inferior MIs and non-inferior MIs, meaning there was no difference between the two sides of the heart causing a drop in blood pressure. So what were the concerns that we were having with a inferior MI and having a massive drop in blood pressure there is just as a concern of having a massive drop in blood pressure when we have an anterior or a lateral MI as well or a non-inferior. So that's a very interesting finding that we need to take in consideration is that our drops in blood pressure happen in all MIs about 23% of the time. And so our real concern with inferior MIs is not exactly scientifically holding up where we should be concerned in all MIs not just inferiors. So here's what we know. We know that hypotension occurs with nitroglycerin at the same rate that we see in inferior MIs and non-inferior MIs. That's an important thing to take into consideration. What we don't know yet is if there's an increase in mortality and increase in morbidity when we have a hypotensive effect in inferiors versus non-inferiors, meaning that we don't know if it affects the body more in hypotension if we see it in a non-inferior and an inferior. But we do know that hypotension is bad in an MI regardless of where it is happening in the heart itself. So should we be giving nitroglycerin more often in inferior MIs? We don't know that yet. We don't know the effects of this hypotension other than the fact that it causes it. And so we should be using nitroglycerin in caution at all times, but even more so in inferior MIs because we still don't know the true effects of that hypotension when giving nitroglycerin if the right ventricles infect are affected itself. So what should we be doing? We should be doing a V4R, which is taking a lead and looking at the right ventricular itself and seeing if there's ST elevation there. Now, if we can confirm if that right ventricle is affected, then we should again use nitroglycerin in caution again. But it doesn't mean that we should be not cautious in non-inferior MIs. This is a difficult one to interpret because it's trying to suggest that inferior MIs and non-inferior MIs are equally affected by nitroglycerin but what it's not telling us is the damage or the worse outcomes that could be happening by giving nitroglycerin causing hypotension in an inferior MI versus a non-inferior so again this is an interesting article that is kind of just scratching the surface of what we really need to know about moving forward with nitroglycerin into the future and using it more often in inferior MIs hopefully you got a little bit out of this and it's interesting to kind of get an idea of how nitroglycerin affects the body if you want to learn more more about it and the opinions of people that are interpreting this particular statistic and this particular study, go ahead and check it out on the GEMS online magazine here that the article itself, a study assessment of nitroglycerin effects on the hypotension in STEMI patients. It's a very interesting article, which is why we did a video on it, but hopefully you learned something here and you can learn something even further on their article as well. See you next time.